When Airbus launched the A380, it hoped that the aircraft would repeat the Boeing 747's success and become the new symbol of aviation. The company believed that the quickly growing number of passengers and the rise of mega hubs would make the new giant aircraft a game changer for the industry and the source of almost infinite profit for many years. Unfortunately, the reality turned out to be completely different and A380 was deemed by everybody as a huge failure for Airbus. But now the aircraft is making a surprising comeback with many airlines bringing back the Super Jumbo. Watch this video to learn why, as the answer is different than what you think. Since early 1970s, the Boeing 747 had been dominating the skies above the Atlantic. It was the only ultra-high capacity jetliner at the time, as the MD-12 concept failed. Airbus, which was emerging as the second largest aircraft manufacturer, also wanted to have its share in this market, so the company started to work on its own high-capacity aircraft. You may not believe this, but the A380 was announced at the 1990 Farnborough Air Show, so roughly 15 years before the first flight. Airbus promised that it would be 15% more efficient than the 747-400 that had just recently entered the service. Another fact that is very interesting is that initially, the new mega aircraft was to be developed in cooperation with Boeing, which however, later withdrew from the project, citing lack of demand to cover the cost. One thing is certain, if the A380 had been launched in the 1990s, it would have been far more successful than over 10 years later. When developing the A380, Airbus considered several designs, including an unusual side-by-side -side combination of two fuselages from its A340, the largest Airbus jet at the time. That would have definitely been the most unique aircraft in the world. But now let's get back to the reality. Despite the fact that only two airlines had expressed public interest in purchasing such a plane, Airbus was already pursuing its own large plane project. Boeing, in contrary, decided to stretch the 747, creating the aircraft that is now known as the 747-8. The manufacturer predicted that air travel will move away from the hub-and-spoke model toward more non-stop routes that could be served by smaller planes. Airbus, however, ignored this and continued its works on the new jumbo jet. Later, Airbus slowed works on the plane due to the financial crisis in Asia, which was one of the most important markets for the potential aircraft. Airbus thought that if small Dubai could take more than 100 aircraft, far more of them can fly in China. Even the A380 designation has been chosen taking into account Asia, as 8 is a lucky number in many East Asian countries. In addition, this number resembles the double-deck cross-section. In December 2000, the supervisory board of Airbus voted to launch a project to build the A380. This decision, however, came a few years too late. Another interesting fact are the costs of the development. When announcing the project, the cost was expected to reach 9.5 billion euro. Later, it increased so quickly that in 2006, Airbus stopped publishing costs after reaching 10.2 billion. Finally, in 2014, the aircraft was estimated to have cost $25 billion or 18.9 billions to develop, so almost twice as more than it was initially expected. The first A380 was unveiled in Toulouse in January 2005 and the first flight took place on the 27th April 2005. Over one year later, Airbus obtained certifications from FAA and ESA. In October 2007, the A380 entered the service with Singapore Airlines, but this was already too late as every airlines was waiting for the 787 Dreamliner and A350, not for another giant aircraft. Two months later, Singapore Airlines CEO stated that the A380 was performing better than either the airline or Airbus had anticipated, burning 20% less fuel per seat mile than the airline's 747-400. Similar comments were also made by Emirates. So what was the reason for the A380 to fail to meet its initial goals in the number of sales? First, the company says that it was aware of the project's risks, but then technology and the market changed faster than everyone had thought. In 2003, when Boeing launched the 787, Airbus realized that the A380 will be simply outdated and its size will be the only advantage. 
787 was revolutionary as it allowed the same unit costs as the A380, but with far less seats, so it was easier to fill it. For example, once Lufthansa started flying the A380 across the Atlantic, the airline found that the yield on its Frankfurt-New York route fell by almost as much as unit costs. Engines were also a problem. In 2000, when the A380 was launched, engine manufacturers promised that there was nothing on the horizon with better fuel consumption for years to come, but then only after three years, they presented engines for the 787 that were 15% more fuel efficient than the previous generation used in the A380. And that left Airbus at a major disadvantage. When deciding about the A380, Airbus was simply still chasing another idea, and therefore the wrong target, as the aircraft would have been perfect for 1990s when airlines used mostly four-engine aircraft on long-haul flights, but not in the next decade, where lowering the operating costs was the most important thing for airlines. The failure of the A380 program is well known, and it will be covered in the separate video if you want. Now, I will only mention that 251 A380s have been ever produced, including 123 for Emirates, the main operator of the Super Jumbo. The airline has always been in favor of the aircraft and even wanted the 900 version that was never developed. According to the airline's president, Tim Clark, A380 is still a hugely efficient aircraft, even though it has old technology engines. He said that a two-class A380 has 4% lower fuel burn per seat than a 787-9 Dreamliner at equivalent space allocation. Other carriers, however, didn't share that enthusiasm and in the wake of pandemic retired or stored their A380s with the possibility of never returning them back into service. However, suddenly, with the end of travel restrictions and the return of mass tourism, mothballed Airbus A380s are starting to make an improbable comeback. And several airlines, including Emirates, British Airways, and newcomer Global Airlines, are actually spending hundreds of millions of dollars to upgrade the planes. So what's the reason behind that? The answer is simple, and the pandemic is mostly behind it. The more efficient aircraft, like the Airbus A321 XLR or the 787 Dreamliner, are back-ordered, so airlines are painstakingly pulling the A380 out of storage to meet passenger demand. It also helps that jet fuel costs have dropped more than 20% since last year. So the A380 comeback is caused by supply chain issues causing the aircraft delivery delays. Once they will be delivered, the A380 will be gone, and this time we will be able to see it only in the museum. The Super Jumbo is also very inefficient in the terms of cargo. The A380's volumetric hold space is less than that of the largest twins flying today, such as the Boeing 777-300, Boeing 787-10, and Airbus A350-1000. For comparison, the cargo hold volume on a 777 is approximately 40% greater than that of an A380. But you don't have to worry if you want to fly the giant Airbus, as Emirates plans to use them well into 2030s. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.